Hey everyone, welcome back to another painting tutorial. As always, my name is Jay, and today I'll be showing you how I paint up this Death Watch Watch Master, an HQ for an awesome faction of Space Marines. And so I start off by priming the entire model black, and then with my airbrush, my Badger Patriot 105, I hit the model from a 45 degree angle with Raven Black, which is actually a dark matte gray. I want to just build a little bit of a dimension to the blacks, and I like it a little uh, lighter a color. And then I hit it with a satin varnish just to protect it and uh, to have a satin finish to the model. That way it's all uniform after this step, and it provides a good surface tension for when I want to hit it with a shade afterwards. As you can see, I'm just making sure to get good coverage. And then I took non oil and I. Uh, just went and put it into, directly into the recesses and along the edges just to basically cut in all the parts that were going to be black armor. And just get in the recesses and give a little bit more depth because now that it's a dark matte gray you can actually build some dimension to it. Black tends to be really dimensionless when painting. So I try to avoid it. As you can see I'm just going along the edges with my non oil just with a nice fine brush. Take my time, get into all these crevices. And then next I start on the skin tones, just the face with rat skin flesh. Of course I thinned out all my GW paints with Lamia Medium in this tutorial. And just to, you know, that way it goes, I'm doing a lot of thin layers. I don't want it to go into clumpy. I want to keep those nice details on the miniature. So as you see, I'm just building up a nice solid foundation of flesh tones on his face with rat skin flesh. And then I went in, I went in straight to the highlight tone First, the best to flash covering pretty much the entire face before hitting it with a shade. So I then did a really heavy Raglan flesh shade just to give it a lot of character and, and, and give, you know make them aged. Uh, this model has a lot of wrinkles, so I wanted to bring that out with Raglan flesh shade. And then I went back to the midtone, first best score flesh, doing basically an overtone, um, an overbrush, picking up all the raised areas, leaving only the very edges and deep recesses, the, the Raglan flesh shade. And then I added some Ungor Flesh into the mix. So it was a one-to-one -one mix of a best score flesh to repeat this process, work my way towards the light source, so slightly higher the edges, the top of the nose, top of the head, eyebrows, and then repeated one more with Ungor Flesh, just the very tops of the head, top of the nose, top of the eyebrows. Pick up any details you really want to, to stand out. For his uh, cape and purity seals, I start off with Xandri Dust to produce just a solid foundation of brown on these areas. As you can see, I, I thinned down pretty heavily as well. That way it's nice and easy to work with. I do find it to go on a little clumpy whenever I do Xandri Dust, so I'm glad that I was able to just, you know, thin it down and, and it, as you see it goes on nice and thin. Easy to build up tones with it as well. It has great pigmentation though, so as you can see, even though it's thinned down, it still goes over the black with relative ease. And then next I went with the Shabti Bone and start off on the skull. Which I'm going to hit just the, the left, the one side of the skull and the rest is going to be metallic. And then I highlight it up once again with a thin down of Shabti Bone. I, I developed layers of, um, of lighter browns for the inside of the cape and the purity seals. So as you can see here I'm just going towards uh, the outside being the brightest and the inside being the darkest because this is going to be the most shaded. And a couple layers of Shabti Bone. Um, just building up, you know, so it would be closer to the true Shafty Bone, at the very edges of the cape. And you see it's nice, it goes on nice and thin, and it, uh, it's a very quick way to build up a gradient of browns for it. Next I hit the uh, skull and the purity seals with an Agrax Earthshade. That way it just gets it in it up at Agrax Earth is awesome. It just ages the uh, the areas, makes it look nice and dirty and worn out. While I was drying, I started on the red areas of the model, which are several: the, the gun on the staff, the uh, the other parts of his cloak, and the parts of the purity seals, all with Mephiston red. Uh, once again, as you can see, I thinned it down. I, as a, I'm going to stop saying that, but I did thin down all my paints with Lamia Medium. And uh, that way they go nice and thin. And 
Yep, as you see, I painted the wiring as well, parts of the gun. I took my time and then did the outside of his uh, his cloak as well. Or his cape. I really wanted to be flowing with the red, so I'm just gonna build up tones. I'm not gonna use any shades on the cape itself. I don't want the recesses to be too dark. I just took my time, build a nice gradient of color. The great thing about Mephisto on red, and the reds in general from GW, they're probably my favorite reds to use because they have such great pigmentation. As you can see, they'll thin down and still goes over with, with ease over the blacks. I did, uh, after the first coat, I did go over just a couple small areas just to make sure it's nice and solid before proceeding to the uh, first highlight. So I just started building up a gradient on the raised surfaces towards the recesses with a 1 1 mix of Mephisto on red and Evil Sun Scarlet. Um, and then when that was done, I just wanted Evil Sun Scarlet as well. You can see just building up a quick gradient to the areas on the cape. Yeah, as you see, I wanted to be a pretty, pretty flowing gradient. The colors didn't want to be too crazy between the recesses and the raised areas, so it actually blends in quite nicely. That one's key. Again, the key is just to uh, blend it in nicely and uh, use nice thin paints. And then just with Evil Sun Scarlet as well. I did use a Caribou Crimson shade on the, the gun. I don't know if that was shown, it was probably just done off camera. This is just with Evil Sun Scarlet, finishing the gradient on the cape. Evil Sun Scarlet um, on the gun after the uh, the shading was dry. So I hit with a Caraver Crimson shade off camera. For his beard, I used a Ministratum Gray. It's a nice mid-tone gray. Uh, you see, it, it's nice and dark, but will uh, our light will a little dry a little bit darker, and I'll hit it with a quick uh, a watered down non oil shading. That way, it's just uh, it tones it down a bit, but uh, it gives us that old character that I'm looking for. For the metallic areas in the model, of course I used Lead Vulture, and that's one of the benefits of, of painting over a nice dark surface. This is a slight, a slight off black, is that you get such a nice shine to it. As you can see, it goes over easy, and has such a great shine to it. I love paintings of metallics over blacks, for that exact reason. I took my time, painted his shoulder pad, his arm, uh, most of the symbols on his body, parts of the gun, Parts of the staff, parts of his backpack. There's gonna be a lot of metallic on this, as you can see. Pretty much the dominant colors are black and silver for uh, for Death Watch, but uh, I obviously a good amount of red on this model, specifically because of the cape. shade afterwards. I really wanted a blue tint on those areas as opposed to the black tint on these metallic areas. So that was a quick way to differentiate them, just by hitting with a different shade. You can then do a same highlight afterwards, but the uh, the shades will, will distinguish them. There we go. And as I said, for the uh, arm, what I decided to do was create my own shade using uh, 
uh, Cantor Blue, a couple drops of water, and some uh, wash medium from Reaper. And using that, as you can see, I created a blue wash, which just really falls into the, the crevices along the edges and will give a nice cold blue tint to the armor. And that's what I wanted to go for for any parts of the armor here. And it's a fun way to distinguish them, as I said, from the, uh, the rest of the metallics on the model. And then when that was dried, I then hit all these silver areas with a quick overbrush or dry brush, depending on the area, with of Iron Breaker. That way it picks up on the ray surfaces. There's a bit of shine, differentiates it from the recesses. Lately I've been liking to paint silvers earlier in the steps, like as you can see now and then cutting them in later and cleaning them up afterwards. For his handle of his staff, I painted it with Xenius Purple, which is like the Gene Stealer Purple from Games Workshop, basically. And uh, just painted on the staff, and then I'm going to hit it with a quick purple shade afterwards as well. I like the, the staff is purple, that way it just adds a new color and, uh, you know, really draws your attention to the staff. I like to add just a random color like purple onto the model because as I said it's just a uh, most of the other colors you know it's just reds, silvers, blacks and then I hit it with Drew Key purple just a uh, shade, the purple shade for, his, uh, for the blade on his weapon I start off with a watered down Cantor Blue. Just to build the uh, background tone. Nice dark blue. And then I started doing a lightning pattern with Lothurn Blue. I also then did all the edging around it. In retrospect, I probably should have just, uh, looking back, I probably should have just kept it at the lightning. I'm not the biggest fan of the edging, but uh, it, it turned out okay. I just think it would have been, I, looking back, I think it would have been even more awesome with just lightning pattern on it. So I just started doing my normal lightning pattern all over the, uh, all over the blade. And you see, just keeping it nice and smooth. And then I cut in all the edging parts of it as well. I said you can do this as well, like if you want to have the edging as well. I, I both would work. I just, uh, if I was to do it again, I'd probably just do the, the lightning pattern by itself. And then I took some watered down ghost white, or sort of thinned down ghost white from Reaper, and just painted some center parts of the lightning pattern just to bring it to life. And it'll dry a little bit darker and more blended into the uh, the blues. As you see, I'm just following it through some center parts, making it the more you know, alive electricity. And now it's time to start the gold. And as always, I used rich gold, um, or as always, I used one of the liquid gold range from Vallejo. It's an alcohol based gold, so I cut it with some 99% isopropanol and then applied it directly to the gold areas. And as you can see, it has such a beautiful, a lot, just a great, magnificent shine to it, straight from the, uh, the palette onto the model. Its shine is incredible, and that's why I love the liquid gold range from Vallejo. Now, when working with them, obviously, don't allow it to clump up too much on your brush. Frequently clean off your brush. But you gotta work relatively quick with these metallics because they are alcohol based and the medium will tend to evaporate quite quickly. You don't want it to dry out on you while you're still wanting to work on the miniature. So know about which parts of the model you want to paint ahead of time. So as part of all the symbols around the model were basically ended up being gold and then that giant uh, emblem behind his head will also be gold. 
and the bottom of the keys. All this was with rich gold. And you see, it's such a bright uh, yellowish gold, and I really wanted that color in contrast to the reds. But I'm really happy with the bright of the gold, but in contrast as well with the dark armor. You know, some spots of really brightness in contrast to the darkness around it. I just worked my way around the model, painting all the symbols. shoulder pad and the uh, the top part of his head. Such a great shine to it. And then finally, after the golds were all done, I uh, I went back to the white areas, and once again, I returned to Ghost White. It's a slightly off white from Reaper, has a blue tint, and I painted the symbol on his chest and the trim on his back of his cloak with the Ghost White and a couple other symbols around him. That's basically it. This is the last color of the miniature. I was really happy with the way it turns out. Once again, the cooler tones of the, of the off white it looks really nice in this miniature. And symbol on top of his servo skull. And the gun. And then I took my time and did all the trim around on the bottom of the cloak, of uh, uh, the bottom of his, his you know, cape. And if you make a mistake, obviously you can easily clean that up after because you're painting you know, such a dark red. You can use the dark red to clean up the uh, light white. and painted all the symbols on the back of his, the, the bottom of his cape. That's such a nice detail to it, I really wanted to give it justice. That's it. So now I know how to paint up this Death Watch Watchmaster. Really cool HQ for the Death Watch faction of Space Marines. In the end, he turned out really awesome. I loved how he turned out and uh, I had an awesome time painting him up. It totally made me want to start a Death Watch army. So we'll see if I do that in the future. But I really like the way his, his uh, blade turned out and uh, the armor and his cloak turned out. I really like the, uh, his, his very subtle transitions and his cloak colors, but I don't want the shadows to be too deep. But I'm glad the way it did. And I like the, the dark matte gray as opposed to a black, as I normally paint. And that's it. Now he's going to go kick butt on the tabletop. So as always, thank you so much for watching this painting tutorial. I really hope you enjoyed it and learned a bit about painting a Death Watch Watchmaster. Stay tuned for more painting tutorials. And as always, subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet done so. It always helps. Till next time, this is Jay saying, happy painting, everyone.